Welcome to Spring Law's Spring Forward Legal Updates webinar series. This series is designed to provide a comprehensive legal overview of key issues related to employment law and human rights in Ontario. Spring Law is a virtual employment law firm advising on workplace legal issues for employers, employees, freelancers, and executives from a wide range of industries. We hope you enjoyed today's webinar and find it useful and informative. To reach our team, please visit us at springlaw.ca. And now to our presenters. Good morning. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Spring Forward Legal's Updates monthly webinar series. Today is the fifth webinar of our 2020 monthly. Uh, our topic today is this mysterious regulation, the OREG 22820. We're talking today about how it impacts your workforce, layoffs, work reductions, and constructive dismissals. We have a number of people on the webinar today, and we look forward to providing you with some practical information about this new legislation and how it may apply to your business. I will be with you today. My name is Jessica Greenwood. I'm one of the lawyers at Spring Law, and I'm joined by my colleague and COVID regulation guru, Hillary Page. Good morning. <laughs> If you are one of our clients, you already know that we are employment and contracts lawyers at our virtual law firm based out of Ontario. I also do work with regulated professionals and have a criminal and litigation background. If you're new to our law firm community, welcome. We want the webinar to be useful, so please feel free to ask questions through the chat function. And if you wish, you can download our slides through the handouts tab. For more information about our firm, check out our website at springlaw.ca. We have a variety of resources you can access there, including our weekly blog posts, a link to subscribe to our monthly newsletter, information about our subscription program for employers, an essential resource, and eBooks for employees who've been recently fired and looking for some solutions for themselves. And I'll just say, um also that we have a YouTube channel and you can watch our past webinars there as well as uh, this one will go up there in the next day or so. Our roadmap for today and the content that we hope to cover as well as your questions is what is infectious disease emergency leave or IDEL? Why is it important? What are the key time periods you need to know about? What does all of this mean for you and your business? How does it fit in with layoffs and terminations before the new regulation and after? And how might this impact your team? And how does this new law deal with constructive dismissal claims? And at the end, some key takeaways. So with that covered, let's jump in. Hillary? Thanks, Jess. Yes, so as Jess said, we're talking about the infectious disease emergency leave. And um, we're going to look at it pre and post this new Ontario regulation 228-20. <clears throat> so the regulation is a regulation under the Employment Standards Act and uh, it just came into effect at the end of May and uh, it replaced a regulation that the Ontario government had introduced in um, March which was introducing this infectious disease emergencies leave. So we'll, we'll get into all of that. <clears throat> so the, um, so in March, the Ontario government introduced this new leave under the Employment Standards Act, and it was designed to provide job protection for employees who needed time off from work for COVID related reasons. And those reasons were basically sort of illness reasons, um, either yourself being ill or needing to care for someone who was ill. Um, caring for children who were not at school or daycare and people who needed to be in quarantine due to illness, um, exposure or travel. And so basically this job protected leave meant that people could assert their right to the leave and they could stay home from work without being terminated for not coming to work um, and it, it as an unpaid leave. And employers would just have to give them the leave um, for as long as these circumstances remained and the employer was prohibited from asking for a doctor's note 
Okay, so that's that's sort of piece one of the, the IDEL leave. Then we get this regulation at the end of May. And this places a whole bunch of other people onto this leave. And these are people who did not raise their hand and say, hey, I need to be on this leave. So they weren't voluntarily going on the leave. They were what well, we're going to say called deemed on the leave. Um, so the, so now the IDEL group of employees who are on this leave includes those people we just talked about who maybe needed to be on the leave, as well as um, anyone who was on a layoff. So a lot of employers had to lay off workers because they didn't have work, their businesses weren't running, um, as well as anyone whose hours have been reduced temporarily by their employer. So these people, people who are laid off or people whose hours were reduced, they're also now on this IDEL leave. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about what the COVID period means in a second. Um, but just to keep in mind, a whole bunch of people are now on this leave, including people who might be working part time, which is like a bit odd because they are on a leave but still working. But that's that's the way the uh, legislators to decide to go. So Jess, I'll turn it over to you to discuss the COVID timeline, COVID time so, period. So these COVID timelines are a bit tricky. There are some key dates to note. The, uh, there are rules that apply to leaves and they could be retroactive. So this new law makes a certain period from January 25th uh, to March, uh, a period where an employee could assert that they had to be uh, taking a leave. So really important to note the timelines and make sure that you uh, keep track of that. And so moving to the next uh, slide, the government is making an effort here to change the Employment Standard Act and give some greater clarity to workers and employers about these timelines. Uh, the COVID period has a start, uh, start date according to this regulation, which starts on March 1st of 2020. The end date will be sometime up to six, uh, at six weeks after the end of the uh, emergency, the state of emergency is lifted or stops. So we're not there yet, but hopefully we will be soon. So these periods and timelines are important because they may apply to your situation and you'll need to understand which regulation applies to your case. Uh, workers or employees who were laid off after March 1st of 2020 due to COVID-19 are considered to be on IDEL. If your employee was terminated before then, they remain terminated. Yeah, so that's sort of the key thing. We don't know when these people who were on a layoff or when their their hours were reduced, we don't know when their leave is going to end because it's this indeterminate time that's six weeks after the um, lifting of the state of emergency. So the impact on the the impact of this new sort of COVID period, as it's called in the regulation um, on your business, is that layoff timelines no longer apply. And I'll get into that a little more in a second. And that um, the risks to employers are, are lessened and the risks um, we'll discuss when, when Jessica talks about constructive dismissal and we'll discuss them in, in terms of terminations. So I'm just going to jump in and talk about um, layoffs and terminations a little bit. So prior to the introduction of this regulation, a layoff under the ESA could only last for 13 weeks or for 35 weeks if benefits were continued. So prior to this regulation being introduced, employers may have laid off employees in March and they're coming up on that 13 week period in June, um, sort of scratching their heads about what to do. Because if you exceed the t allowed time for a layoff, your employee is deemed to be terminated and that's gonna trigger um, entitlement to termination, notice pay and severance pay. And, um, and then also your employees just terminated. So what can you do? Um, so that was prior to this regulation coming to it, into effect. 
So now, as we've said, any hours reduction or layoff is now no longer a layoff. It's a deemed IDEL. And the IDEL, as Jessica just said, is going to last as long as the COVID period lasts. So from you know March 1st until six weeks after the state of emergency ends in Ontario. I think it's in place currently until the end of June. Um, so, you know, the earliest we'd be looking at would be sometime in August. Uh, so following the COVID period, we'll see what, you know, happens and where people are at with being able to bring back their employees. But because those employees were, you know, who we thought were laid off are actually not no longer laid off, employees, employers may following the end of the COVID period and the end of the, the deemed IDEL be able to place employees on a normal layoff, um, which would then start the 13 week or 35 week clock ticking. And just a quick little sidebar about layoffs is that uh, um, you need to have that right to lay off an employee in your employment contract for it to actually be, um, you know, a true legal layoff. So if an employee is going to take an IDEL, a leave like this, if they are going to say that they, de they need it, they should provide notice to their employer. And ideally that notice should be in writing, but it doesn't have to be. It can either be orally or in writing. And remember that employers uh, included in this regulation, they're allowed to ask for some kind of evidence, uh, but the employer is only allowed to ask for documentation that would be reasonable in the circumstances if an employee needs to take this kind of leave. And so this can lead to some uncertainty if employees are asserting that they need to take an IDEL because they, they have a reason, either because they have COVID or they need to care for someone that does or they have childcare issues. And it leaves employers with a bit of a state of uncertainty of when all of this will end. Because like Hillary said, there's no specified period. Uh, this could impact your, your current layoffs uh, if, if layoffs be, are deemed an, an IDEL and are outside of the timelines. So something to definitely keep track of. Um, and also keep in mind that if an employee is taking a leave, it doesn't have to be consecutive. It doesn't have to be a certain number of days in a row. They could take some days here and some days there or assert that certain parts of their leave were an IDEL. So there is a distinction to keep in mind between a deemed IDEL and a voluntary IDEL. If the employee was already uh, on a layoff, it may be that it, it is that their, their leave was uh, a deemed IDEL. So we can look back on that period and say that they're on this deemed leave. But if they've taken a voluntary uh, leave, that's because they need they assert that they meet the criteria under the legislation uh, that I was just mentioning, that they themselves have contracted uh, one of the enumerated infectious diseases, including COVID, uh, someone else that they have to care for has, they have child care issues because their daycare has closed as a result of uh, preventing the spread of COVID-19. So something to keep in mind uh, there as well. Yeah, so just um, expanding on that a little bit and the difference between these sort of two categories of employee employees um, who might be now on the IDEL. As Jessica just said, there's the, the people who voluntarily asserted their right to the IDEL. And those people, you know, are those people who might be home because they're um, daycare is closed or something like that those people um, are going to be entitled to job protection from the idel and so an employer uh, can't terminate those employees while they're on the idel it's sort of similar to um, how you can't terminate someone who's on a parental leave right under the employment standards act they have a deemed they have a right to reinstatement at the end of their leave so you can't terminate them for any reason related to their leave and they're entitled to return to their position or a comparable position. Um, there are maybe some ways that 
that we could get around that, but I would suggest if you are needing to terminate someone who's on uh, a voluntary IDEL, you get legal advice. Um, and then the people who were laid off or had their hours reduced and who are on the deemed IDEL, those people um, can be terminated. So if you know as an employer, I'm not gonna be able to bring this person back, um, you, you can terminate them. Uh, I see we have a question here. So does OREG 22820 um, prevent an employee who's been temporarily laid off from suing civilly? And we're going to get to that, but the short answer is no. It does not provide protection um, to employers from a civil lawsuit. Um, and we'll, get, we'll get to that in more detail, but just wanted to flag that as a question we got. Uh, benefits. So employees who are on the IDEL, and this is right in the regulation, if you're if you're if you had an employee who was voluntarily on the IDEL, benefits needed to be continued for that employee. If you had employees who were laid off prior to um, their layoff being changed to this leave, and you weren't continuing their benefits, you don't have to restart benefits. Um, for employees who are going to be laid off after May 29th, <laughs> they're actually not laid off. You're putting them on the IDEL because this regulation removes the existence of a layoff, basically, for the COVID period. Um, those employees should have their benefits continued. So there's a little distinction there between whether the employee's hours were reduced or they were laid off. Um, or whatever was going on with them prior to May 29th. If you hadn't continued benefits, you don't need to restart them. But if you're, if you're um, you know, laying them off or reducing hours, somehow they're getting onto the IDEL after May 29th, benefits do need to be continued. So what about that question of being sued? It's one thing that uh, employers have to be aware of and think about and consider when they're looking at terminating an employee. Under the Employment Standards Act, you could be have a constructive dismissal claim where the employer changed the employee's hours or changed something fundamental about the job without the employee's consent. Now, as a result of this new legislation, an employer is not constructively dismissing an employee if they change the terms of their employment temporarily because of COVID. So that is some assurance to the employer that their risk in that regard is less. But the change must be temporary, not permanent. And employees may still have common law rights, uh, even if not under the Employment Standards Act during the COVID period. But this is new legislation, hasn't been tested in the courts yet, and we haven't seen exactly how all of this will shake out. But certainly, it takes, it's the uh, government's attempt to take into account the realities of the pandemic. So, Hillary? Uh, yeah, so I, so the regulation, it, it only, as Jessica said, deals with constructive dismissal under the Employment Standards Act. So there's kind of two streams that an employee could pursue an employer um, for constructive dismissal. And one would be to make a Ministry of Labor complaint and that's a complaint process under the Employment Standards Act. And what this regulation does is says we can't, you can't do that anymore. Um, there's no constructive dismissal for these reasons during the COVID period. And employees who had previously made a constructive dismissal complaint under the ESA, those complaints have been like canceled. So that's that's like a pretty big deal to me. And that, but uh, employees. The, the legislation cannot change the common law or what courts are going to do. So um, we don't think that there will be much of an impact on um, an employee's ability to, um, to bring a constructive dismissal claim in court as a result of uh, an illegal layoff or an hours reduction or pay reduction. And as I said, again, in order for that layoff to be legal, an employer needs to have that right in a valid employment contract. And, um, you know, that's 
sadly not something that we're commonly seeing. Um, in order for employees to have a have success with their constructive dismissal claim, they generally need to assert um, their right to the constructive dismissal claim quite soon in time after it happens. So, you know, they need to be told your hours are reduced, you're being laid off, and they need to right away kind of disagree. So if they don't right away disagree, and many employees have not, because, you know, at this point, maybe months have passed and they have not put up their hand and say, hey, I don't agree to this. Um, a court would likely see them as having acquiesced to the change, so accepted the change, and um, that harms their ability to bring a constructive dismissal claim in that case. So we're, we're actually ahead of schedule. This has literally never happened before. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, the, the key oh, takeaways, yeah. uh, I'm on it. So keep in mind that this legislation doesn't in, apply to non, it's, it applies to non-unionized -un employees only. It doesn't apply to unions. Think about what kind of IDEL your employees might be on, or if you are the employee, uh, was it voluntary or is it a deemed IDEL? and keep track of the dates and that will govern which legislation and which rules apply and if the rules and regulations are retroactive in your case. Uh, that will help determine uh, what you should be doing. And I see we're just getting another, I've got another question here. Um, oh, this is a good question and one we've gotten a lot. So what can an employer do if someone on a deemed IDEL is recalled to work during the COVID period but refuses to return without a good reason? They want to collect the serve instead of working. Can an employer take the position that the employee has quit? So that's a, a great question and I think it's actually coming up a lot. Um, because people are pretty comfortable on the CERB in some cases and they don't really want to go back to work. So if they're on a deemed IDELS, they were laid off and now you're recalling them and they don't have a reason to assert a voluntary IDEL. So they're not taking care of kids or um, taking care of someone who's ill or in a quarantine for some reason, then uh, I don't think that they can refuse to come back to work. Um, that's just sort of insubordinate. And if they refuse to come to work, I think you could likely take the position that they've abandoned the job or they're quitting. Um, and a court would look at sort of what, what was reasonable to interpret from their actions. And if they're like, I refuse to work, um, I think there's a lot of things we could decide that that, that looked like, look, maybe it looks like quitting, or maybe it's a reason to um, terminate them with cause, like if they're just refusing to work. Um, I would just also say that it is pretty easy for an employee to assert their entitlement to a voluntary IDEL. So if an employee um, says, actually, you know, I have a fever, I can't come in. Um, the legislation strictly prohibits the employer from asking for any evidence in that situation, any or any medical evidence. I think you can ask for evidence reasonable in the cir circumstances, but you can't know, require a doctor's note. That's right, yeah. or like a nurse's note. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Maybe you could ask for like a note from their chiropractor or something. But like, likely that's not reasonable. Um, so it's going to be hard for an employer to defeat a claim to a voluntary IDEL. And in many cases, you're gonna have to kind of take the employee at face value. And, um, and then you would not be able to terminate them or treat them as having quit in that case. Um, here's another question. Is seasonal allergies considered job protected under IDEL? Uh, I would say no, because the the IDEL is an infectious disease emergency leave. So someone needs to have a reason related to COVID for not working. 
and seasonal allergies is not a reason related to COVID. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> nice try, though. I had a point. <laughs> Um, can you terminate an employee for shortage of work unrelated to COVID? Uh, new technology took away their work, for example, without tripping over this regulation. Um, yeah, I would say uh, if your reason has nothing to do with the employee, and I'm going to assume this employee is either on a voluntary IDEL, um, or maybe still working. If the reason for the termination has nothing to do with them taking an IDEL, nothing to do with COVID, um, and and there's no sort of discrimination there, I think you could still you could still terminate them, um, obviously with notice. Um, uh, I'll just keep going on our slides for, there's actually a lot of questions coming in, but um, I just wanted to make sure we touch on our pivot program, which may be helpful to some people watching and maybe we'll answer some of your questions. Um, so our pivot program is a DIY sort of legal toolkit for employers, um, which has a lot of key information and um, precedents to address all sort of the, the workplace situations that are coming up around COVID. So um, it's this, it's a, it's a guide and then a variety of templates with additional guides um, to explain how to uh, reduce hours, reduce pay, um, you know, terminate, lay off, uh and some some um information about reopening how you recall employees with template um you know we have template termination letter template layoff letter template recall to work letter a template um update on the ida letter so to update employees who were um on a layoff and now they're on the ida so that's a uh a pretty neat um, sort of DIY affordable tool you can check out on our website. The oh, DIY okay. tool is uh, definitely something to take a look at if you're a small business or on a budget. It's accessible online right now. It's on our website and it's an affordable uh, pay one price uh, product that you can take a look at to help you with your business. It gives you the plan and the tools and the precedents, as Hillary said, that you can take control of some of these issues yourself. Uh, you've got the experience of lawyers behind you who've drafted the documents and they're legally sound, but you can plug in and fill in the, uh, the blanks, so to speak, so that it applies to you and to your workforce. Thanks, Jess. So we do have a couple more questions. We're going to say thank you now, though. <laughs> thank you for joining us this morning. Yes. And um, do keep an eye on our website. We'll have our next uh, Spring Forward legal update. It's scheduled for September, but we are plugging in additional webinars um, as the law is changing so quickly. And just to make sure we're, we're staying current on um, all the COVID changes that are really impacting people's businesses. And uh, we have two minutes left, so I'm just gonna take a couple more questions here. Um, here's one. Does a temporary fundamental change include salary reduction during the COVID period? And would that mean salary reduction can only continue up to six weeks after the state of emergency? So that, uh, question sort of gets at the distinction between the um, constructive dismissal under the ESA and constructive dismissal under the common law. So it's a, a temporary salary reduction um, may constitute a constructive dismissal, sort of depends on how big it is and if the employee agrees or not. Um, during the COVID period, it won't constitute a constructive dismissal under the ESA, but 
both during and after the COVID period, it could still constitute a constructive dismissal under the common law, I think. Um, uh, what if an employee temporarily laid off due to COVID is not responding at all? No answer to the call to return to work. At a certain point, if the lack of response continues, can we terminate? Uh, in that situation, I would say you might want to take the position that the employee has abandoned their employment um, if they're really not answering at all. Um, you probably could terminate them, but you could you could also maybe take a position that they've abandoned their employment or quit. And you would want to document that as well. So you would want to send something to them in writing saying, we're taking the position, you've abandoned your your position and if we don't hear back from you by this date uh that will confirm yeah good point and also i would say like um make sure you're documenting your attempts to call them back to work in writing and those should probably be like you know substantial um so maybe like several tries to contact them to get them back um in order to strengthen your your uh, your abandonment argument. Um, so I, I think we basically covered everything and it is 1101. So I think we'll say goodbye for today. Uh, thank you guys for joining us and be sure to check out our website and our blog. Um, we've got a guide for employers uh, that addresses a lot of COVID type questions on the website as well. Um, which, which might be helpful. And we're keeping our blog up to date as the law continues to change. So thank you for joining us. Thanks again. And have a good day.